In previous episodes, we've covered how F-A-18 Super Hornets have launched from the carrier Eisenhower located in the Red Sea and used air-to-air missiles to take down Houthi attack drones and anti-ship missiles. Now it was just revealed that the first American drone kills in the post-October 7th chapter of the Iranian proxy war were actually tallied by AV-8B Harrier IIs operating from the USS Bataan, an amphibious assault ship and lead vessel in the Bataan Amphibious Ready Group, or ARC. Bataan is now in the eastern Mediterranean, which is the Sixth Fleet area of responsibility, with the ARG's other two amphibs, Carter Hall and Mesa Verde. The ARG was moved there in early January after the Ford Carrier Strike Group returned home for planned maintenance. But before that, Bataan and Carter Hall were sailing in the Persian Gulf and Red Sea, which is the Fifth Fleet area of responsibility. In the weeks immediately following the October 7th Hamas terror raid on southern Israel, Harriers from VMA-231, the Ace of Spades, found themselves flexing into the role of air defense in the face of the growing threat posed to ships by the Houthis in western Yemen using attack drones supplied by the Iranians. The Houthis claimed to be targeting shipping headed for Israel as a show of support for the Palestinians. However, in the months since the Israel-Hamas war started, their attacks have also been directed towards commercial ships with no association with Israel, as well as U.S. Navy and other coalition warships. Hey, let me interrupt for a second to talk about a problem I had that maybe you have too. If you're like me, you might sign up for a subscription because you want access to an article you come across while doom scrolling or a show you want to watch. And it doesn't seem like that big of a deal because they're, what, $10 each? But before you know it, you're spending a substantial amount. I recently discovered I had multiple accounts to two different streaming services. And the worst part is I didn't ever use them because I'd long since watched the shows that caused me to sign up in the first place. And nothing else there jumped out at me. Well, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower your bills, and manage your money better. You can use Rocket Money to cancel unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. You can also use Rocket Money to lower your bills. Simply by uploading a photo of your bill and tapping a few buttons, Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you from internet service to cable and phone bills. Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a month with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. To save more and spend less, join the over 500 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash wardcarroll or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That is rocketmoney.com slash wardcarroll to get started for free. Before the Eisenhower strike group made its way from Norfolk to the Red Sea, the Bataan was the only sea-based asset with air power in the region. The Marine Corps Harriers, which are at the end of their service life and are being replaced one squadron at a time by the F-35Bs, are also equipped with the APG-65 radar, originally used on Legacy Hornets, which is capable of giving pilots a granular air picture that allows them to accurately commit air-to-air weapons. The United States Marine Corps adopted the British Harrier in the early 70s with the idea that a vertical takeoff and landing jet could be land-based close to the front lines of a battle and also, for the first time, would allow jets to be added to the amphibious assault ship's air combat element. However, the AV-8A was hard to fly, particularly in the hover mode, and the mishap rate was high. McDonnell Douglas developed the AV-8B, which fixed the main problem by adding computer logic to the throttle response, eliminating the potential for thrust asymmetry in the hover mode that caused a number of crashes. After several upgrades through the years, the Harrier II Plus was introduced in the 90s as the Marine Corps Hornets upgraded to the APG-73 radar, which made the APG-65 inventory available for use in the AV-8B fleet. It's worth noting that the British Royal Navy always used their FR-1C Harriers primarily as a fighter. During the Falklands War in the spring of 1982, FR-1s flew over 1,400 sorties and tallied 20 kills of Argentinian aircraft using the AIM-9 Lima Sidewinder heat-seeking missile, which was that weapon's first all-aspect variant. A recent BBC article revealed that one of VMA-231's pilots, Captain Earl Earhart, tallied seven Houthi drone kills before Bataan left the Red Sea. Earhart explained the Bataan's air combat element, or ACE, was postured to respond to tipper information coming from a nearby Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer using its highly capable SPY-1 search-and-track radar system. It's essentially math, Earhart said. The command room will say, the Houthis have launched a one-way attack drone. We have this amount of time. Then we can step down from a two-hour response time all the way down to a five-minute response. 
Images taken aboard Bataan at the time show the VMA-231 Harriers launching loaded with AIM-9X Sidewinders and AIM-120 AMRAMs, as well as the Lightning targeting pod. Once airborne, the Harrier would get range, bearing, and altitude information from the destroyer before obtaining an onboard radar picture using the APG-65 and then confirming the identification of the lock outside of visual range by slewing the Lightning targeting pod to the radar lock. Once the contact was verified as a Houthi drone, the pilot was cleared to fire. Captain Earhart didn't tell the BBC, and neither CENTCOM nor the Marine Corps has identified what weapons he used during his seven engagements, but considering the limited heat signature of Houthi drones, it was either a very short-range sidewinder or medium-range AMRAM shot. A gun's kill would have given the most street cred, but is unlikely because of the close ranges required and fear of exploding drone fragments hitting the Harrier. Fighters shooting down drones isn't new. As documented by FLIR footage, Israeli, Saudi, and Ukrainian fighter pilots have all done it in recent years. But Captain Earhart appears to be the first pilot to rack up more than five, which introduces the question of whether or not he is, as some military aviation websites have claimed in recent days, the first American ace since Duke Cunningham became one during the Vietnam War. The answer isn't clear. And a quick review of the history of ace status shows that even at the very beginning of air warfare, the rules changed. During World War I, the Americans, late to the conflict, asked that the number be lowered from 10 to 5 because they feared they wouldn't have enough opportunities to shoot down Germans before the war ended. The American Fighter Aces Association defines ace as follows. An American fighter ace is a U.S. citizen who has served honorably as a fighter pilot in a U.S. military service or the service of a nation not at war with the United States, who has destroyed five or more enemy aircraft in aerial combat. But the definition of that isn't categorical in that it leaves open to interpretation who qualifies as a fighter pilot and what qualifies as an enemy aircraft in aerial combat. The list of World War II aces from the United Kingdom Wikipedia page illustrates this problem. Among the Spitfire and Hurricane heroes of the Battle of Britain is Frederick James Barker, who was the tail gunner in a Defiant, and Raymond Headley Clapperton, who's credited with destroying 24 German V-1 buzz bombs aimed at London and other British population centers by tipping them off course using the wing of his airplane. The book Aces High, written by Christopher Shores and Clive Williams, blurs the picture even more by stating that the V-1 Aces buzz bomb kills, quote, were not counted as enemy aircraft and were not, therefore, added to victory totals, end quote. We've covered let's call them pure aces on this channel, legends like Eddie Rickenbacker, Richard Bong, and Joe Foss, who shot down their enemy counterparts as they were trying to do the same. Classic Knights of the Air stuff. We've also profiled the more modern air combat of conflicts like Desert Storm, Specifically, we sat down with Mongo Mangilo, who had a MiG kill on the first day of the war, and we profiled the only F-14 kill that happened on the last day of the war, where a VF-1 Tomcat shot down an Iraqi Hilo flying over the desert below. So if both of those pilots had repeated their feats four more times, they would have been considered aces using the American Fighter Aces Association definition. But would those accomplishments be equal in the annals of air warfare? Meaning, is shooting down five helicopters the same as shooting down five MiGs? And now modern warfare introduces the variable of unmanned aircraft. Last year, U.S. Air Force F-22s and F-16s were used to down Chinese spy balloons off the East Coast and over the Great Lakes. If any one of those pilots got four more balloons, would they be an ace? It seems like we need categories or subsets of aces, maybe something like this. Ace Alpha is defined as victories against another manned enemy fighter with hostile intent. Ace Bravo would be victories against any enemy aircraft, not technically a fighter, but with the capability of shooting back, including rotary wing aircraft. Ace Charlie would be victories against any enemy aircraft without the capability of shooting back. So we're talking about transports and airborne early warning aircraft like the AWACS. And finally, Ace Delta would be victories against any unmanned enemy air vehicle. Any combination of those four categories required to get to five could be annotated like Ace Alpha Delta or whatever. Regardless of all of this, we here at the channel would like to commend Captain Earhart for his superior airmanship demonstrated during these flight operations in the Red Sea. Thanks to his efforts and those of the aviators in the AOR now, the sea lanes through the region remain open and global markets are by and large unaffected. And we'd also like to credit our friends at the War Zone for the focus they brought to their coverage of this particular topic. All right, that'll do it for this episode. If you're not already a subscriber, become one so you don't miss anything going forward. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. And in the meantime, 
I look forward to talking to you again very soon. 